You probably already know the runtime validator Zord, but I'm switching to Archetype. It's up to 100 times faster than Zord, and it has some really interesting features. Let me show you how to use it and why you will want to make the switch. If you stick around to the end as well, I'll show you how this new feature in Archetype means it's more than just a validation library. Getting started with Archetype is super simple. All you need to do is install the npm package, and then to create our first type, we just import the type function from Archetype and pass through our schema as our argument here. You can see I'm creating a user type here with name, age, email, platform, and versions, where versions is going to be optional. Now, the first thing you'll notice about Archetype is its syntax. If you already know TypeScript, you can write Archetype. You can see that in a few of our basic types here where our name is simply a string. Our platform down here is Android or iOS, so a TypeScript union, and the same four versions. It's a number or string array. These would all be valid TypeScript as well. Now, when I first saw this, I actually thought that I would hate this, and there was two main reasons behind that that luckily Archetype solves. Firstly, surely there's no way that this could be type safe and actually show me error messages, right? Well, I was very wrong about that. Let's say I misspelled string here and missed off the G, and then maybe missed a closing bracket down here in my array. You can immediately see we're being shown some TypeScript errors. And if I hover over these, you can see it says type string is not assignable to string. So it's showing us how to fix this. And the same with versions. If I hover over this, it says missing expected and then our closing bracket. So it's actually giving you useful error messages as well. All of this while being performant too. The work behind the scenes on this is awesome. My second concern was that I really liked syntax highlighting, but all of these strings sort of look the same. When I'm scrolling through my code quickly, it wasn't clear whether there is an object that I created or an archetype type. Again though, archetype has solved this and they actually provide you with an extension that you can install that is going to enable the syntax highlighting. The extension is simply called archetype here, as you can see, and it's from archetype IO. So I can go ahead and install this. And back in my code, you can see it looks a little bit different and it's added in syntax highlighting for things like our versions, our optionals here, our TypeScript types with our number and string array here. It just makes it way easier to see at a quick glance. The extension also gives you really nice error summaries when you're using inline messages with error lens. So are those two issues solved by archetype? This is when things really started to click for me. The other thing I thought is if we're using TypeScript syntax, can't that be a bit limiting? How do we take our validation to the next level? We've probably already noticed this with my fields like age and email. For my age property, I'm not just using a number type, I'm also adding in a constraint here. I'm saying I want the age to be above zero. I can actually go ahead and modify this a bit and say I want it to be less than 120 as well as I don't know anyone that old. And then we add back in that constraint for it to be greater than zero. The other thing we can do is use a keyword. I don't just want to take in any type of number, I just want to take in an integer. To do that, all we need to do is say number and then dot, and you can see here we get a list of those built-in keywords that we can use. We can check for infinity, negative infinity, epoch. I'm gonna go ahead and choose integer. You can see we've done the same thing for our string as well. On the email, we're not just checking that it's a string, we're checking that it's matching an email. So this is built into archetype. Because trust me, you don't want to do the regex yourself for an email. It's an absolute nightmare. You can actually see there's loads of built-in ones for a string here. You've got things like alphanumeric, base64, credit card, and just tons of them that you can use. So this is super handy. Plus that developer experience of having autocomplete on these strings is so nice. There's been such attention to detail to the developer experience in this library. There's loads more validation types that you can use, like our ranges and our keywords there. But if it's not enough for you, you can also use your own regex, or you can actually create your own function using the narrow function. But before I show you that, let's go ahead and actually validate something. What I've done here is create an object that fits the schema that we've created, so called check me. So this is the one that I'm going to want to go ahead and validate. And all we need to do to validate this is go ahead and call that user type that we created. Then inside of the user type, it can take in data, which is anything. It can be unknown. So this is what we want to validate. So I can simply pass through check me. Now our output here is either going to be the data that we want out, or you can see it's going to be arc errors. Now all we need to do in our code is check if there were any validation errors, which you can do by saying if the output is an instance of type.error and then output here is simply going to be arc errors. Now this is actually a list of your errors that you can get out so you can see each one individually. But what's really nice is it also has a summary. So this is just a human readable summary of all of the errors. So this is a really nice one to return to your users. It has super nice error messages in this library. Then you can see the else statement on this is simply going to give us the data that we asked for. So this is validated data. If we go ahead and run this now, you can see that we get an error back. It says that age must be a number, but it found that it was a string. So that's a nice error message to get. We know where we can fix this immediately. In my check me object, I pass through 119 as a string instead of a number. So if I run this again, you can see it successfully validated and printed out that second case that just says, hello, James, age 119. 
Let's see a few more error messages as these are super nice. You can see here that we had our union between Android and iOS. Then also our version here is a number or string array. So let's say I misspell iOS down here and let's say I also gave this an array instead of a number. Let's see what these errors look like. You can see the platform must be Android or iOS, but it found that it was IO, so I misspell it. And then it says that versions there must be a number or a string, but it found that we had an object because of course an array is simply an object in JavaScript. So we can go ahead and just fix those errors again and everything is running as normal. That was the basics of Archetype then, but now let's step it up a notch and take a look at some of its more advanced features. The first one is that narrow function, which as I mentioned, allows you to define your own validation logic and also your own error messages. This is actually a massive pain point for me when using Zod and building out complex forms. Trying to get a nice error message out of it was just always a bit of a developer experience nightmare for me. Let me show you narrow them with a really simple example. In Archetype, we do actually have divisor checks, so we can check if a number is divisible by two, so we can check if it's even, but we can't say if it isn't divisible by two, so an odd number. So how do we create our own odd check? Well, to do that, we can use the narrow function. All we need to do on our type of number down here is say dot narrow. And then inside of dot narrow, we give this a function. And this function is first going to have the number that we provided. I'll call this n. And then it also has the context of archetype. Inside of this function is now where you write your validation logic. Adding mine in then, you can see that if the number is divisible by two, I want to go ahead and throw an error as this must be an even number. Otherwise, if our validation passes, all you need to do is return true. We well, can see here though is I'm doing context.mustbe be to form my error message. Now this one is quite simple. I'm just saying that it must be odd and I let archetype handle the error message for me. You can actually see if I hover over must be here, it's essentially the equivalent for the reject. So you can actually change this to context.reject and then pass through your error message as a string. Or you can actually add in a load of information to get archetype to create it for you. We can see what we can pass in if I hover over the arc error input here. We have things like expected, actual, the problem, some metadata, loads of things that you can do to create some advanced error messages. I'll keep mine simple though and just say must be odd. If we go ahead and test this out then, I'll check if the number 10 here is odd with that same check that we did before for our validation. You can see that we get an error since 10 is an odd and it says must be odd brackets was 10. So we get a really nice error message out. Hopefully you can see then how easy it would be to build out your own powerful custom validators using archetype, as well as providing really nice error messages to an end user. Another really powerful feature though is morphs. This allows you to transform the shape and format of data and can be piped before, after, or even between your validators. These are some basic examples of what you could do with morphs. The first one is passing some JSON. So we take in stringified JSON first. So we check that the type is a string and then we pipe this into our morph. So the pipe function here takes in our input. So that's the validated string. And then we simply return what we want to do with that data. So the transform that we want to take place. In our case, it's json.pass. So you can see pass json now has an output type of object. Now you can actually simplify this a lot using some of the built-in parsers. Instead of this, we could just say string.json.pass and that will go ahead and handle it for us. Another example I have is first we take in a type of string here and then we pipe this into a function which just goes ahead and trims that string. Then an even cooler one that we have down here in the even one is this is actually going to take in a type of string first, but then pass it to a number. And then with that number, we use this pipe notation here. We check that it's divisible by two. So in one line here in one string, I've checked if a number is even. This is actually the exact same as doing type string.numeric.pass and then piping this to another validator that would check if the number is divisible by two. But this just allows us to do it shorthand with this two operator here. It actually represents that there's loads of different ways that you can write out your archetype types. There's a few APIs you can use. You can use the fluent style of API, the string style, which we've been doing in this video. You can also use tuples and arguments. I'll leave the documentation down below so you can pick which one suits you best. But in general, I like strings, which is what I've been using in this video. The final morph that we have here is using this to function. All this one does is takes in a string and passes it to JSON, and then it makes sure that that JSON matches a name and version. The to function here is actually just shorthand for pipe and then passing it to another type validator. So this is sort of the longer format. You'd pipe it and then you do another type validation to check that it matches name and version. But luckily we just have this shorthand to do that all like this. So those were basic examples of morphs, but hopefully you can see how these can be expanded to be super powerful. The last feature I want to quickly show you was a game changer for me, and it's a new addition in Archetype 2.1. I'm talking about the Pattern Matching API. This is the first syntactic matcher in JavaScript, and it showcases the potential of runtime types to do more than just validation. You can see what this is useful for in this very simple size of example here. What this function is going to do is return the size of something, but that something could be something like a string, array, number, or big int. And you see how that's handled here. We import match from Archetype, 
Then if it's a string or array, so that's going to be our key, the definition of the type, we have our handler function here. So on a string or array, we can simply get the length of that by doing v dot length, so the value dot length. Then if it's a number, we just want to return the number. There sort of is no size to a number. And the same with a big int. If it's not one of these types, so the default case, we'll go ahead and assert. Now assert is going to throw an error, which is essentially validation, saying that you can't pass through one of these types to this function. You can see the output down here. If I did size of ABC, we'd get three. Size of this array, we'd get four. And then the size of true here, which is a Boolean, it will throw an error saying it must be an object, string, number, or big int. The other example I have here is actually using the Fluent API. So we have our match function where we have string, number, or big int. And you can see if we have a string, we just want to return the length of that string. And number and big int are the same. We just want to return the value itself. But then we can add on a case by doing dot case. In this case, we say that if it's an object that has a property of length and that length is a number, then just go ahead and return that number. And then we also have a default case down here that will return zero for anything that doesn't match these above cases. There we go. That's some of the more advanced functionality of archetype. Now, when you start to piece all of these things together, you'll realize that there's no scenario that archetype can't handle and you get a really nice syntax to go along with it. Plus, in my opinion, it actually looks better than Zod when you build out these really complex types. I've only scratched the surface here too. If you're a power user, you'll find so many more advanced features like scopes, generics, and configuration. You'll also be pleased to know that it has integrations for tools like TRPC, React Hookform, Hono, and more. Let me know if you will make the switch in the comments down below. Subscribe, and as always, see you in the next one.